Uh, so good day to everyone. I, I've tried this morning to arrange a way of saying it to, to, to be good for everyone, uh, but it, it's Mama. great to have so many people here today and it's great to have so many people from different um, organizations around. I do hope everyone is seeing my screen okay. Any, yes, I see some nodding. Thank you ever so much. I can't see the chat. I can't see anything. And of course, with Zoom, it's always a, a learning curve for everyone when presenting. And today, I'm actually going to share quite a couple of screens between them. So I do hope that goes okay. So um, I am Christina Magder. I am the Data Collections Development Manager at the UK Data Service. And today, with, with us, we also have Anka Vlad, our Research Data Service Officer, and Hina Zahid, our Senior Research Data Officer. The UK Data service is funded by the UK Economic and Social Research Council to meet the data needs of researchers, students and teachers from all sectors. We not only provide access to high quality local and regional, national and international social and economic data, but we actually provide guidance um, and training for researchers in able to, to share their data and also understand data. Now, why integrate tools for checking in data training? Uh, there's the saying with the hammer, you can hammer a nail. Well, we can hammer a nail with a rock if you want. Uh, one can try that. And if no hammer is available, it's an alternative. However, we do have hammers to make our job easier. And it's the same when it comes to numeric data. There are tools out there that enable us I am so sorry for whatever reason, my slides are just going away. Uh, there are tools out there that enable us um, to assess the quality of data. And this presentation today is going to go over a tool that is more about assessing the metadata of a data and data integrity issues, and also another tool that looks at disclosure control. Throughout the last few years, UK Data Service has provided quite a lot of this training on this. And what we discovered is not only that a lot of people are interested in finding about tools to assess their data in a more standardized way, but they're actually very engaging as well. And I'm going to show you, and they're in the presentations as well, or all the links. We do have exercises online, which are free to, to use in your own trainings, and of course, enhance when needed. So, Cleaning data manually, as we know, is really time consuming and it's not only about getting to know the data, but finding all the issues such as incorrect, missing, inconsistent values. When done manually, they can lead to that error, I would say, because of course one can have a better or a worse day. And depending on the data size as well, especially if we talk about gigs of data, it can be quite, um, quite difficult to do so. Tools can actually help flag this issue. So they don't change the data by any means, but they do flag where the problems are in a more consistent error-free approach. They can de be deployed as a service for self-deposit repositories. Um, repositories can ask, for example, collections that only meet a certain threshold can be submitted. Otherwise, they need to work on the data before being submitted. Or, of course, they can be integrated within data publishing pipelines, such as curation workflows for different types of data. And one example that always comes to mind here is actually energy data, because we're talking about such big flows of data, checking that manually would be quite unfeasible. The UK Data Service has developed a free, easy to use open source tool known as QA My Data that provides a health check for numeric data. The tool uses automated methods to detect and report on some of the most common problems in survey or numeric data. And these are missingness, duplication, outliers, and direct identifiers. Requirements were scoped throughout a series of engagement exercises with the service's own data curation team, other data service publishers, manager, quantitative researchers, and we try to basically find out what are the most common problems that people usually get when assessing data and how we can apply a tool to actually help, um, help them. The tool is um, specifically um, in order to support researchers, so when they prepare their data, but also data reviewers and publishers, such as data archives that accept data. Now, the tool offers a number of configurable tests that have been categorized into four types. We have file, metadata, data integrity, and disclosure control, control checks. 
And these checks can be run on either SPSS data or CSV file. Of course, when it comes to CSV, the metadata checks don't quite work because they check when we talk about SPSS and data at the variable level themselves. Uh, but we usually in social sciences, most of the data we receive is in data or SPSS format. All of these tests can be easily adapted to meet the user's own desired threshold they need. And I'm going to do a demo just to show you how the, how the tool works. And the software creates this, what we like to call a data health check that details the errors and issues as both a summary and detailed report. And it provides a location of the failed test. So for example, data creators, owners, depositors can actually go to this report and see where the tool has failed and see what they actually need to change in the data to make sure that it's ready for um, secondary use. QA my data checks if the data file open, if the file name is within standard um, concept. So for example, uh, and again, all of these are configurable so everyone can adapt it to their own needs. But at the UK Data Archive, because we use a unique splattering system, we really don't like spaces in file names and illegal characters like ampersand. So the test by itself, by default in the configuration file is to check that it only contains A to Z characters in one, one to nine. Um, but again, this can all be, um, change depending on the needs. We do have metadata checks and the tool actually flags if there are any missing variable labels, if we have invalid variable names, which somehow can happen in SPSS files, and if we actually have missing value labels for defined missing. And again, this is quite a specific test because um, a lot of the uh, archives do use Nestar as a dissemination platform. And when it comes to Nestar, the data must be extremely well um, labeled so it doesn't throw a feed basically back at you. So even if from an um, analysis perspective, it says in the user guide minus eight and minus nines are missing, don't know, um, refuse to answer, it's actually very important to have them uh, labeled in the data file. We do have integrity checks. Um, it actually prints very, num uh, very nicely the number of numeric and string variables, which of course the end user can check um, if it's correct according to the documentation. It checks for odd characters in variable labels and value labels. And again, these are all user defined so they can be changed depending on the need. Depending on a, a dictionary that is fed through uh, the tool, it actually checks for spelling mistakes and truncation. We currently just use an English dictionary from GitHub and there are quite a lot of dictionaries out there um, for other languages. And it also reports on uh, empty variables, basically variables that have been set up a system missing completely. Instead of being deleted from the file because they were disclosive or there were any issues with the variables themselves, they couldn't be made available. Instead of deleting them, they have been set a system missing, which can actually be quite confusing for secondary users. And finally, we do have disclosure checks. So what QA My Data can do for you, it actually flags unique values in continuous and categorical variables, which of course outliers are problematic from a, from a statistical disclosure control perspective and a lot of the people that have come to our training have found that extremely useful because it just points you to the variable you don't have to do frequencies for them all and it also has um, a regular expression functionality called regex which user can define for example I want to find all the postcodes in a data file and again we're quite lucky because when it comes to regular expressions there's a lot of libraries out there um, uh, just by doing a google search and we can try to find common direct identifiers postcodes email addresses that follow this standard um, regular expression in the file. The configuration is written in YAML it's well, we hope it is very user friendly. We got quite a, a lot of a, a lot of good feedback from it, and whenever we train on it, and that's where I think it's really important to 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 bear in mind when you want to integrate tools in the training, is to make sure that you know. I don't know what is happening with my PowerPoint; it's just going away from me. 
Um, it's really important to know the tool itself and the way the configuration file and the whole QA My Data has been designed is to make it e easier for trainers as well to integrate this in the training and demonstrate different aspects of the tools. The output file, the default one is HTML because that's most human readable, I would say. The tool does have the option of providing JSON outputs, but JSON outputs are more for when, for example, you're integrating the tool in a uh, curation pipeline, smart meter data or, or big data, because the JSON can actually be read by machines. In terms of deployment, it's available under an MIT license. On the GitHub page, uh, the UKDS website has a very detailed install guide that we have been using in our training. And if you want to integrate this tool in your own trainings, please do um, use the uh, information available online. Now I'm going to try the unexpected and share multiple screens at the same time, not at the same time, one by one. Um, so the QA My Data webpage does contain the user guide um, helping people to install and run um, the tool, but it also has the different um, config files one can use in the teaching exercises we have been using in our own teaching. So for example, initially we actually asked people to eyeball the data that they're going to run through QA My Data, and then we're asking them to assess whether they found more issues than QA My Data or QA My Data found more issues than them. Or if it's if it's the same, you 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 get people with amazing eyesight. I'm not wearing my glasses today, so it's a bit like what is saying in there. Um, and now, just as a quick demo, what I like to do when I teach any tools for checking data is pretend I don't know anything, and I start basically from the user guide, and I go through the user guide with them, explaining how to install it. Despite the fact that we ask them to have the tool installed, we do a demo of the install just to make sure everyone is up to date and everyone has the, has the tool installed. As a different scenario, we do have sometimes uh, virtual machines prepared for them so that they have that additional safe space in case their computer doesn't actually um, want to run the program. Now, what I do again is try to pretend it's the first time I'm seeing QA my data. So I'm actually explaining to them, I'm just copying the command they need to run QA my data in a blank notepad. I'm not sure if you can see the notepad. Um, can everyone see the notepad? No, it doesn't work like, you see, it, it's amazing we can all meet virtually, but when it comes to sharing things, it, it becomes rather difficult. It is this one here. I've just copied the command in a notepad and I'm explaining to them what the command does. The most important one, they need to have QAMD run. That's how the program knows to run all the tests. We also need to specify where the data that we want to run the, run the uh, software on is. And I have so many things open on my file. I am just copying the path. And again, if this, um, this could have been more straightforward if I could have shared more screens. I've just copied the entire path. And I always say to them, it's easier to just control C, control V, because once you type it in, well, you might miss something uh, and then it doesn't work. And again, it's I've learned by teaching these tools hands-on that it's easier to explain to people that everything takes time and you don't need to hurry because you can end up missing something or you can end up breaking. Nothing is completely breakable. Um, we, can go, we can go back to the original problem and solve it, but it's always about taking time. So I'm just typing here everything I need to do. We have where the file is. It's under my users. I have a specific folder for it on my desktop. And the file of the name is actually teaching data set dot sav. I picked up um, an SPSS file because again, most of the files that we do work on um, are usually SPSS files or Stata files. And again, it's quite nice to, to see the metadata. Metadata problems come up. Um, Output results is basically telling how the results site should be called. We can have results teaching, for example, .html, and I'm specifying where the config file, and I was talking about hurrying and 
while talking as well, sharing screen. I've missed the I in there. That's not in there. That's not the correct part. The correct part is this one. And what I need to do now, and again, sharing the screen, that's going to be rather interesting. I need the command prompt, which is not here. My command prompt here, we need to change directories to where QA My Data has been installed. Again, all of this is explained in the user guide, but ideally, if you are teaching on this, trying to run the program a couple of times before, just to make sure it runs quite okay. I've done Elf, of course. I did not change the path. I've put QA My Data run. I am going back. I am sharing completely something else, I think. CD, we're changing the path to where QA My Data is installed. And then we're running QA My Data. We have a nice loading bar. And it's all done. Um, to bear in mind is it actually has the um, regex, the disclosure for direct identifiers turned off by default simply because it can be quite resource intensive depending on the data file. So for example, if you have a big data file which contains a lot of phone numbers, it can take up to four or five minutes to run that. But of course that can be edited in the config file. Again, it provides a very straightforward output file, which can be easily um, easily clicked to see what actually failed. So for example, I did not allow any variable labels or names to actually have these characters here in. And if we click on this test itself, we can see one specific variable, V137, failed my test. Now, I am aware of time and I like to talk a lot more about this, but I will quickly show you the, the default configuration file as well. And we'll go back to SDC micro in a bit. The configuration file can be open in any software um, that edits text, ideally something like Notepad++ or on Mac pages. And again, it can be very easily edited by users. For example, if I want to add here another illegal character, I can even add an A, for example, um, and it would actually, I can save this, I'll save it as default because we can run it again in just a new share. I'll share again this screen here. And refresh. Where is my... Oh. It failed again with a hundred and no. It failed again still on 137. So again, it's very easily configurable and you can find everything you want in the user guide. I'm also providing a couple of details about um, contacting us if you want to include this in your, um, in your training. I need to share now my PowerPoint presentation because we're going to statistical disclosure control tools. And from current slide, um, we're quite lucky when it comes to statistical disclosure control tools as well, especially freeware. We have Amnesia, for example. That's actually a very nice, quite new tool in its, in its current form, developed by OpenAir, and it can be run locally and also online, especially for demonstration. The online functionality is extremely useful. We have MuArgos, which is a standalone software um, developed by Eurostat and recommended by Eurostat for governmental statistics. We have ARCS, which is a Again, still an anonymizing um, tool for sensitive personal data. And we also have an R tool, it's an R package, SDC Micro, which is our current preferred um, tool for uh, teaching on statistical disclosure control. Now, of course, we do have the commonly used techniques like aggregating categories, generalized meaning, combining variables, using standard coding frame. And the same is when assessing the quality of numeric data, as in the variable labels, the value labels, etc. When you do it completely manually, it's not 
it can be overwhelming, but of course it's prone to that error and it's not very reproducible. That's when disclosure control risk tools come in handy. They provide this amazing comparison between different FDC methods. They're quick and easy to explore. What to bear in mind is, however, they are very skill intensive. And whenever we teach on this, we try to, to, to make everyone that attend understand that they can't just download the tool and become expert in, the, uh, in statistical disclosure control. However, one of the reasons we chose FDC Micro for our trainings and for our internal practices is not only that it's free and open source, it's actually extremely well documented online and it has an amazing community. The GitHub is extremely, um, extremely populated and people can report different problems which get fixed, I would say, within a week's time. It also allows for multiple risk assessment methods, which is extremely useful when making an informed decision because you can see what the individual risk and what the, the global risk of the data are. And because I only have three minutes left and we should have time for questions as well, I'm just showing a couple of screenshots with FDC Micro. It provides a graphical user interface, so there's no need for our knowledge needed. People don't need to code in R. It's just the two line um, script they need to run and it opens in a browser, ideally Chrome or Firefox. They ha it has the seven menus about and help actually explain how to use the tool and provide a lot of different resources. We do have, um, we can actually upload SPSS data, CSV, SAS files, and we can set up our problem again just by clicking different buttons. So there's no coding um, in R needed in there. It's quite user friendly because people can actually play quite a lot to it. It doesn't change anything on the original data file. They can set as many problems as they want when it comes to statistical disclosure control. So they can see, for example, if I add these specific variables, what is the disclosure risk in my data? What is the individual disclosure risk? Is that actually real risk or is it just because it's calculated from a mathematical formula? It also provides the option to apply K-anonymity, which is really used in clinical trials data, for example. And again, it allows the user to select which variables should be the ones that um, get more suppressed than others. Um, once everyone is happy with the anonymization, again, it doesn't change anything on the original data file. You can export it. And again, you can export it in CSV, SPSS, Stata, etc. It provides this anonymization report, which is fantastically great when it comes to making sure you've applied the techniques, you should share it with colleagues or share it with a repository. And it also provides a script in case someone actually wants to reproduce what you've done. In the PowerPoint, I've provided a lot of further resources. Uh, we got a lot of people being extremely excited to have a tool that's quite friendly to use um, to actually assess the disclosure risk in their data. I did put my uh, contact details in the presentation. Please feel free to email me if, if it's something that you want to include in your training. I am very keen on statistical disclosure control. I've also provided the data sharing queries mailbox from UK Data Service and also the QA My Data mailbox. If you have QA My Data specific queries, uh, please do contact us at that email address. And I can see in the chat, we probably have a lot of questions. We have two questions, Christina. Thank you very much for the very interesting uh, presentation. I think there's one question from... Uh... The QA My Data one is just the uh, UKDS one. And the FDC Micro one, that was the graphical user interface. So once you run it in R, it just pops up with that page. All right, thank you. And then Yessi uh, provided another question. Uh, where can we find customizable code you showed in Notepad++? Uh, for the config itself, it depends on a user, so you can configure it as you want. When it comes to regular expression, so the ones for, for direct identifiers, there is um, there are quite a lot of libraries out there, and one of them, I can't, I can't remember for the sake of me. It has a very easy URL. Um, I think it's, it's based on Python as well. Um, but basically, if you just Google search regular expression libraries, you should be able to find a lot of libraries that um, have different regular expressions for different direct identifiers. 
All right, thank you very much. Uh, I see, great, thank you, says Yesse. Um, I think we don't really have any more questions in the chat for you at the moment, but please, if you do have any questions for Christina later on, post them in the chat or save them for the next uh, next session because Christina will also be there and will happily uh, answer your questions. Now, without further ado, Linus, enjoy. The floor is yours uh, for the creation of the uh, presentation of the Ferris Fair Projects tool um, for data. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lina Shepinskas. I come from DANS, Data Archiving and 